Howdy folks, and welcome to the 10th episode of the Mad Fuzzy Podcast. I am your sock knitting obsessed host, Marta. I am coming to you from Knox, Maine, where I live with my handsome man and uh, his mother, Betsy, and our two wonderful dogs. This is a little podcast about knitting um, and doing homesteading crafts here in our little part of rural paradise in Knox, Maine. Um, I would like to thank you all for sticking with me and coming back. I know it has been a while since I recorded last. So any uh, returning viewers, thank you so much for coming back. And to any new viewers, thank you so much for stumbling upon this episode and giving me a gander. Um, I'm going to talk about a lot of knitting today. I have um, knit something besides socks, uh, which is kind of crazy for me because I have been knitting nothing but socks for several years now. And uh, I'm gonna show you that, so that's exciting. I've got some a, kind of a new craft I've been working on. I've got a finished object in that and a question to be answered, as well as a nice big life update. So hold on tight. This is gonna be quite the fun-filled episode. Um, you can find me on social media. We're gonna start off with a little administration on social media as at Mad Fuzzy on Instagram. You can also join the Ravelry group that is the Mad Fuzzy Podcast group. There's a lot of fun threads over there, as well as an ongoing giveaway, which I'll tell you a little bit about in, in just a moment. Um, and uh, yeah, then we're gonna talk about life and, and whatnot. And so, yeah, let's get started so this doesn't get too long. I'm going to start off with just a little bit of administration. Um, I did mention we have a giveaway going in the Ravelry group. It is a skein of my hand-dyed and hand-produced yarn which is Mad Fuzzy. Um, it is a 100% East Frisian yarn that I am having milled for me and then I am dyeing it. Um, so that's something I'll talk about a little bit later. But that giveaway is for the first 100 introductions in the Ravelry group and we are at 71 introductions. So thank you so much for everyone who has stopped by and introduced themselves. I have been reading along. It's kind of something I try to do. Um, it's almost as soon as somebody posts, I love to go over and see who's there and who said hello. Um, and we're moving towards 100. And at 100, I'm going to do a giveaway from the first 100 introductions. So that's why I don't comment on any of the introductions. I will start to comment after 100. But I wanted to give you a gander at that skein again. I'm just trying to find it on my table here. I got so much going on over here, I tell you. But this I, this is a skein. I put my little Mad Fuzzy label on it. Um, there she is, that beautiful pinup sheet. But this is the skein that I am giving away. It's called Into the Mystic. This is on the Pure Fuzzy base, 100% East Frisian, which is an extremely long-wearing, rustic-feeling, kind of hand-spun feeling, fingering weight yarn. Um, and it's got these gorgeous little pops. So that's, that's what you have a, a one in 100 chance of winning um, if you go on over to that Ravelry group and introduce yourself. Um, I love it, thank you so much, thanks for joining the group. And, uh, and hopefully we'll be getting there soon and I can send this out to its new home. So we will then jump right into knitting. Yay, okay, so this, there's gonna be quite a few finished objects and I'm gonna start off with the socks. So I had been working on a pair of socks out of a crazy zabber ball for my friend who is Romanian, who is home in Romania right now. And um, I made her a pair of Christmas socks. I had promised to make her socks for, this is now the second year I told her I was gonna make her a pair and I never did. And she's, she's a firecracker and reminds me every time 
that I have not made her socks yet. So when I took her to the airport to go home to Romania for two months, I cast on a pair of socks for her and knit pretty much exclusively on them for a while. And they are finished. So this is the Hermione's Everyday Sock Pattern in its true form. This is where I got that beautiful garter ridge. Um, and this is a crazy zabber ball. And I love the gradient. I love the subtle texture of the Hermione's Everyday Sock Pattern. I'm gonna get even closer here. Look at, I just, it, it's subtle but perfect. So that is, I do have a pair. I do have the other one hanging out somewhere. So much stuff over here. So there's the other one. Heel and flat, uh, heel flap and gusset construction. I knit them from the top down. I believe on size 2.25 millimeter needles. Um, and I also believe it was magic, no, yeah, magic loop. Yeah, I don't even remember these. I, the needles are in new projects now. So um, if you, I think I had them on my last episode, so you can go back. So there's that. Um, that's my first finished sock object. My second one is out of the one Lupin Zodiac in the Let It Shine um, pattern. So that has this, I'll show you on the other sock here in a second. Um, it has this gorgeous lace detail down the front, slightly offset, and you do different socks, so you do an offset for the different socks, but I just love how this yarn knit up. I'm in love with this colorway. I forgot how nice it was to knit with something so plump and, and juicy, like a, a, a merino blend, and it was, it, the, the lace looks gorgeous on it, so here's the, the other sock, and there's that lace panel that goes all the way down the front of it, and oh, I'm so happy. These are gonna be gift socks for my aunt She's gonna, she's gonna love these for Christmas. But my mother watches the podcast and she said she wanted a pair of these as well. So I had to cast her on a pair and I'll show those in my works in progress um, in a moment here. But there's, there's that, oh, I dropped my sock blocker, sorry. There's that, ah, oh, I'm so happy with that. So you know, none of those are blocked. They're just stuck on the sock blockers. I will block them before I give them away. I've got a lot of blocking to do. I was kind of going to do it like an assembly line sort of a thing as it, they went out the door. Um, but Betsy did me the biggest favor the other day. We were sitting around watching TV and I was knitting and she offered to weave in all my ends. So all of my finished objects have their ends woven in. They have them woven in correctly and they look gorgeous. I'm very, very excited um, that I didn't have to do that, one, and two, <laughs> It is done so well. So everything looks super nice. Um, yeah, so on to my next finished objects. Um, so I decided for Christmas this year that I was going to knit everyone a simple worsted weight beanie. Yes, beanie, that is not a sock. Um, so I bought a whole bunch of Knit Picks Wool of the Andes, um, in just a ton of colors. I think about 16 balls of just different colors and I was gonna make a hat every single day. And I, I haven't made a hat every single day, but I have gotten pretty far. So the first hat I made, um, I really didn't like the brim on it. And me and Betsy were sitting around watching the Bad Girl Wolf Sits and Knits, that's the name of Bad Girl Wolf sits and knits podcast, which is a great podcast. You should definitely check it out. But she was talking about this folded brim and how squishy it was. And she just kept showing the squish factor. And by the end of her second episode talking about these folded brims, we were converted entirely to, to knitting this way. And so I went on YouTube and I found just a very simple video on how to pick it up properly. Cause you do pick up the brim on the inside and knit the stitches all together. And there's great videos, Google it. Um, so, I knit a double brim on my first finished object, and here it is. This is my first finished object. It's a blue hat with a brown stripe, but look at this brim. Uh, it just, it's so squishy with the worsted weight yarn, and you just pick, pick up the stitches on the inside. But this hat is just a little too short. I wish it was longer, and I also really didn't understand the pattern. What I'm using is Beanie by Nice and Knit. It's a free pattern on Ravelry. Um, and so the pattern has it so that these decreases on the top 
um, they go in a straight line and I just didn't really understand what was going on and I didn't have double point needles at the time and I was using a way too long a cabled knitting needle. I don't want to kind of show you how I fixed all of this. Um, but it ended up spiraling and I, I kind of like the spiral. It's nice but I really liked the way the hat looked in like the project photos a lot more. So then I cast on another one. So here's my, here's my second finished hat. Again with this super squishy brim. Um, brown with, um, I didn't have enough to do a full stripe of this blue, which is the blue from the other hat. My goal for this is to use every single yard of, of yarn. That's my goal. And, and there'll be no more wool of the Andes left. They'll all be hats. So I did a little bit and then I didn't have enough. So I did another stripe and another stripe. And then I didn't have enough brown either. So now I have a, a blue top. But you can see that I have figured out how these decreases work here. And I've made them straight. And I like it a lot more. So that, hat number two. Been busy. Hat number three. And I like this one a lot. It's a nice gray with the three different colors of blue. I did have enough to finish because I started with a new ball. It takes almost exactly a ball. I will have enough of this gray to do a stripe on another hat, which is completing my goal of using all the yarn. But I just, I'm super happy with them. And I've kind of got this spacing pattern down. I know now how many rows I want to do for the double brim, how many rows of the main color and each of these stripes and then how many rows here and then I start my decreases to make a little bit longer hat. And you can kind of see it's, it's, it's just a little bit longer. Just a, it, just a, it just needed to be a little bit longer. So I'm really happy with the fit on these. I think these are gonna make great Christmas gifts. So those are the finished ones. Um, and that also brings me to the end of my finished objects. And I've got a couple works in progress, but I have been really knitting on one project in particular because there is a time frame. I've got to get it in a package, I've got to get it in the mail, and I've got to send it to family far away. And then the other thing is I'm always knitting on a hat. So I'll knit while I'm downstairs exclusively on these socks. Um, and then we'll go to bed and I will turn on my bedside light and I'll knit a hat until I literally am falling asleep on my knitting. And so um, I have just those two works in pro progress. Um, the first work in progress that I have, oh my goodness, so much stuff on this table. Such a tiny table too. Hold oh on. Jeez, um, get organized, Madden. So my first one is, mom, if you're watching, don't look. Th these are your socks just saying. So these are my mother's Christmas socks. This is in my Madame colorway. It is another Let It Shine. Oh, Marta, why don't, why don't you put this on the blocker? So people can actually see it. Sorry, folks. So out of practice. So out of practice and kind of over caffeinated, if you can't tell. All right, there we go. For the audience. So there is my Madame colorway all knit up and looking super pretty. This is again that Let It Shine sock pattern which has that nice um, lace pattern in the front. This is a heel flap and garter or heel flap and, <laughs> heel flap and gusset uh, sock and I am just super happy with how these are turning out. Um, so this is sock number one. And because I have the deadline, I have been working away on sock number two and trying to make it to the general milestone. So I'm now on, on the heel flap, but here is sock number two. And I hopefully will be done very soon. And there's my little ball. Oh, I just love this colorway. I re-dyed it for my first update. And so you'll see that in the Mad Fuzzy News. Um, it's a little bit different. I did tweak it a little bit, but I like it a little bit more. So that. That's my works in progress. No, that's not my works in progress. I have one more, sorry. So, uh, like I said, I've been working on the socks downstairs before we go to bed, and then I've been working on a hat. So, this is my latest work in progress. 
yarn here. And this is going to be another beanie, which I did a little. This is called Almond. And then Firecracker Heather and some other blue and a avocado green. And I'll do the green for six rows like the other colors. And then I'll do the crown decreases and seal her up and put her in a pile and maybe talk Betsy into weaving it all the ends again. This is working out well. I kind of feel like I'm cheating, but at the same time, she offered. <laughs> I'm going to take it. If someone offers to weave in your ends, yes, yes. But I was using this old knitting needle set that Betsy had, and it had a 16-inch cable, but when you added the knitting needles on, it was way too long, and I was just struggling and hating knitting these hats. So I popped down to Heavenly Socks in Belfast, Maine, which is my local yarn store, and I absolutely love them, and I never get in and out of there without chatting for at least 20 minutes. But I bought some Nova Platinas. Um, this house is expensive, and I wanted Carbons, but this is what I could afford. So I am loving it. It's a, on eights. It's on a 16 inch cable and they're just flying off my needles. I had no idea that worsted away yarn on big old needles went so fast. It's like, if you think about it, like the number of stitches this is, this is just like the beginning of a cuff of a sock. You know, I've knit basically the cuff of a sock. And then like if I was knitting a sock, I'd have all that other stuff and then a whole nother sock to do. So like the time it takes from cast on to finish object is just dumbfounding. I'm also realizing that it's a lot easier to knit with thicker needles. Um, and I could see why people teach other people how to knit with bigger needles. It's just a little bit strange. I just started with the tiny ones and the tiny yarn and that's all I ever have done. Um, I'm feeling like I've been a, asleep a little bit in the in the whole knitting world and the uh, it goes so fast it goes so fast I'm loving it I, there's progress around every corner so yeah that that's the end of my knitting that's all all of it I'm doing pretty good we're 10 minutes in Right on. Well, I still have a whole bunch to talk to you about so don't get too excited um, I wanted to kind of answer a um, it's a question I had about the heel and toe yarn. I had talked about heel and toe yarn on other episodes, how I had used it in um, different projects with wool that was 100% wool and to keep my socks from wearing. And we had seen it on Betsy's finished objects last week, or not last week, last episode. Last episode was a while ago. Uh, and I had had a question about kind of where I get it and what it looks like and how much it is and all of those shenanigans. So I thought I would just kind of touch on it here and then insert a video of where it is in my local yarn store. So the heel and toe yarn, they come on these little bobbins and this is, and some places call them reinforcement thread. That's what it says on the sign in my local yarn shop and they have a variety of colors. Um, I know that Heavenly Socks has the big display, which you'll see in this video. And then um, I know that Cashmere Goat in Camden just has this glass vase filled with them. But if you talk to the person behind the counter and ask for reinforcement thread, there's this. Also, some brands of commercial sock yarn, I think it's Yawool, um, they, they have one of these inside the ball of yarn so you can weave it in it's the same pattern and colors as the textured, or not textured, uh, self pattern sock colors. Yeah, so it blends in really well. But yeah, I get them at my local yarn store. They are not expensive. I think they are $1.75 a piece. Great stocking stuffers, hint, hint. Um, and so I will insert the video of me at my yarn store shop, um, right now. So that was the question that I had about heel and toe yarn and how I use it. And um, I will hold it double with the yarn and just knit it like I'm normally knitting. So I have two strands, one that's the reinforcement yarn and one that's my actual yarn. 
And yeah, it does make things a little bit thicker, but it definitely keeps things from wearing through. There are people who are very hard on their socks. I am one of them. So it is nice that I have spent all this time knitting these socks and they're gonna really last. Um, I think in combination with like the East Frisian nylon blend that I have, it, they would last forever. I think they would, you know, in the, the apocalypse came, my socks would still be here. It'd just be cockroaches and socks. So yeah, that is the end of knitting things. Yeah, completely the end now. Um, I'm going to talk about what else I have been making though. I have been doing another craft. So once a week, twice a week, I'll go over to another farm that's over in Freedom, Maine that does um, basket weaving. And so I've been learning how to weave baskets. And I finally got my first basket. This is my first ever. You see some pictures of it in other um, other podcasts, I put some pictures of me making it in the beginning, but I got it lashed, I got it rimmed, and it's all done. So this is my first ever basket. It's got a square bottom, round top. Oh, give me frame here. Yeah, I'm just super excited about this. Just I'm. So this is gonna be. I'm going to put like pickles and some main main products and my mother's socks all in this basket, and I'm gonna send this to her for Christmas. So this is for my mom. Oh, I should have warned you again, mother, not to look. Oops, she does watch my podcast. I may tell her to just skip this whole podcast. Like, sorry, spoilers, mother. I love her, but yeah, this is gonna be for her, and I think she's just gonna absolutely love it and fill it with awesome things and take great care of it because my mother is awesome like that. So. I have another one in progress that's also going to be a Christmas gift, which I hope to have another episode out before Christmas. Um, but if I don't, you'll you'll probably see it after. But, oh! Dropping everything. This is going to be such a spastic episode. Like I said, over-caffeinated. All right, moving along here. I believe my next thing... Oh, let me turn the page on my notes so I actually know where I am in the whole world. All right, next thing is Mad Fuzzy News. As you may have already noticed, they, the shop did not go live on December 1st. Um, the shop is not going to go live probably until after the new year, sometime in January, I'm hoping. There's a lot of things going on. Christmas knitting is happening. I maybe was a little over ambitious, but I have been dying my first update and, and moving forward. It's not that I haven't been doing anything and twiddling my thumbs and I have lots of yarn to show you, which is always fun, uh, but there is, it's not for sale at this moment. So, womp womp, but I guess that's classic me. I always bite off more than I can chew, but I'll show you what I've got and, um, and hopefully you'll be patient and stick with me as I get ready to, to open up the shop and, and go live. There's been some rumors about kind of doing a launch party at Heavenly Socks in Belfast, which would be a lot of fun. And I think I would make it kind of a mini skein palooza. Um, so if you are in the main area, there may be something going on at Heavenly Socks for Mad Fuzzy, which is very cool. Thanks, by the way, to Heavenly Socks for being such an awesome yarn store and so supportive. Um, so yeah, Mad Fuzzy is moving quite along. I've got a couple skeins here that have been re-skeined. I've got a couple skeins that have just come out of the dye pot. And uh, yeah, I, I thought I'd kind of give you a, a gander at, at the goods. See some new colorways, maybe get excited about some yarn. So the first on the docket, these have been reskeined. And I should also tell you my woes of reskeining. At the moment, all I have is a Swift. And so I skein them off of the cones, I dye them, I then roll them onto my ball winder and then back onto the skein to reskein them. And th it's just, whew, it is time consuming. So for Christmas, my mother got me a skeining machine and she ordered it from the UK and I was really happy I picked it out myself and it was gonna be sent in two packages and I've received package two of two, but package one of two has not arrived yet and I really, I'll call the Thorndike post office and see if it's there, but I have a feeling it's probably on its way back to the UK. And so I have all this skeining to do and I have part of a skating machine, but it is not all of it and it is not functioning. So, womp womp, doing it the old fashioned way. So that's why some of these skeins are not reskained. 
and some are, because Christmas knitting has taken over my life. Yet again, I do this every year. All right, so first game is these guys are um, on the, this one is on the nylon base, this one is on pure fuzzy, and so these are what I'm calling punk scene. And it's just this gorgeous grayish um, kind of charcoal color and pinks and light blues. So those are those bad boys. Give me another little look here. It's gonna be fun. The next one is um, Latin Beauty. You had seen the test skein, um, but here it is reskained up again. This one came out a lot more purple than this one. Um, but these are both on nylon bases, so that's an 80-20 blend, 80% East Frisian, and 20% uh, nylon. So there is, there is Latin Beauty. Oh, I love this color, pink, hot pink. And then my second dye session, um, which I have not gotten reskained, is I did Stormborn again. And I added a little bit more speckle to it now. Um, the blue is slightly different, but these, this is going to be the final formula. So there is, this is how I keep track of what each is, because it's, they feel very similar. So this is, isn't that nice? And this is on the nylon blend again. And then the last color I did, it's underneath this pile here. Hmm. Oh, it's in my lap. <laughs> how organized could I be? So. This is the newest version of Madame, so there is a lot less white in it. Um, the purpley red is a lot more prominent. There's still a few speckles of the blue and the pink, and you, you get them, and it's nice, but they're very subtle. So there is Madame. Awesome. Awesome, just awesome. I'm so excited. So that is, that is the Mad Fuzzy update as of now. I do plan on dyeing a few more skeins and a few more colorways for the actual update and hopefully launch party. And um, I, will keep you, I will keep you up to date and letting you know what happens. If nothing else, just sending out a video, letting you know uh, what's going on. But as of now, no Mad Fuzzy, but I do have other exciting things. All right. Looking at my notes one more time. Oh, so yeah, and actually this brings me to the end of all yarn content. Um, I'm going to talk a little bit about my life and what's been going on in our lives, uh, if you so wish to stick around. But if you are only here for the yarny goodness, thank you so much for joining me. It is a pleasure talking to you whenever I can, and thank you so much for sticking with the long hiatus. Uh, I appreciate it and I'm so glad that I did have a chance to sit down and talk with you today. Um, so as far as my life goes, I have one really, really big and exciting piece of news, which is the roof is on our house. We had two gentlemen come who are handyman at the farm. They dug the original foundation um, pillar holes and they squeezed us in because we begged them to squeeze us in and they came out and they put the roof on in two days, like one side, two side and done. And it is gorgeous and it doesn't leak and I am so happy. And then we kind of hustled our bustles and put in the remaining two windows and plastic up because it snowed four inches last night. And I'm so glad I'm not shoveling out my house right now. But during the whole process that the roof was going on, I got like the flu. I haven't been that sick in years. And I was bedridden for about three days and I was just watching them through the window, putting on my roof like, oh, hey, guys, this is great. I'm going back to bed. And I finally got out on the other side of it. And whew, it was rough. But that is another reason I lost an entire weekend to illness, which put me even further behind and then into Christmas knitting. Ugh. Ay, 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 ay. But that was, that's the big and exciting news. Um, we had kind of a small adventure uh, last night, the snowfall 
kind of came and I, I was expecting it, but what I, I wasn't expecting my little Mazda truck to be so terrible in the snow. And so I managed to get like 75% home and there was just a hill and this post office box truck had stopped and the truck in front of me decided to stop and kind of assess the situation. But that means that I came to a stop at the base of this big hill and I got no momentum. So I was starting this hill in like at, at zero and we get halfway up the hill and like I'm just not going anywhere. I'm not going up, I'm not going down. And I try to get the, the truck over to the side and I'm just, just spinning. I can't go up, I can't go back, I can't go over, I can't get off the road. So spinning tires and, and maneuvering in maybe five minutes, I get the truck sort of off of the roadway. And I call uh, Heath and Betsy and they come and the Subaru and they pick me up and we go home. I leave the flashers on the truck. I figure, you know, there's no, why, why am I gonna get a tow truck onto this death hill and put people in the roadway? I'll go get it in the morning. So I get home and we're all by the fire and we're hanging out and I get a call from the dispatcher and there's a sheriff's deputy um, who has found my truck and I need to move it. It is apparently in the roadway. So we load up and we go back down and I mean, it's just, there's people sliding everywhere. There's maybe four or five cars. Sorry, the video automatically stopped. I guess it got bored of me talking about this adventure anyways, but there was, there was several cars off the road or above my car and below my car and we called a tow truck and they were gonna be ours just hours, they were, they, we were in line for them. They had other stops to do, other things to do. So um, this guy came to try to pull out his mother's car, unsuccessfully pulling out his mother's car. And then we asked if he would tow out this guy in the truck ahead of us. And then if he would get me out so I could back down the hill and park in like this little parking area because I, I was not gonna make it home. You know, that was just the first hill. So we parked my truck. We still got to go get my truck this morning. And um, the deputy was happy. It was off the road. Uh, and as we were driving home, the guy who had gotten pulled out and pulled to the top of the hill, he was off to the side of the road on the wrong side of the road again. Um, but I think the guy who had pulled him out originally was right behind him and noticed. And I think he was pulling him out when we went by. But I got to go get my truck this morning. First snow. There's always adventures. I think in the future, if there is snow, I am just going to call and say, come get me at the farm. I'm not even gonna try to get home because that was ridiculous. Um, yeah, so that's, that's pretty much all the excitement that's been happening here at the farm, at the Shire, in my, my life in general. Um, I am going to stop this podcast here. I'm gonna get it uploading and I am going to go back to feverishly making Christmas gifts because that's all I do until Christmas now. I think after Christmas, I am going to take a train ride to um, Hamilton, New York to see my friend from college who has family there and he's going out for the holiday. And so it is a lot closer to go visit him in New York than it is for me to go to Montana. <laughs> so I'm gonna hop on the train. It's gonna be about seven hours each way. Um, I'm gonna knit my little pants off and have a great time and watch New England go by and realize that I am not driving and I do not have to pay tolls and I do not have to deal with any of the shenanigans, but I'm hopefully going to be spending two days with him and I hope to maybe do like a little vlog on my train adventures. I've never been on a, I've never been on a train in America. I've been on lots of trains in Europe and whatnot, but I've never been on a train in, in America. So I'm excited to kind of see our our homeland transportation system. We'll see how it goes. But all right, I th this is it. That's the end. Thanks for watching. I hope to get another episode out before Christmas. Fingers crossed. But if I don't, I hope you have a wonderful Christmas or whatever holidays you cel celebrate. Um, and if you don't celebrate any holidays, my birthday is Christmas Eve, so you can always celebrate Martimus with me. I will be 30 this year on Christmas Eve. So I'm pretty excited about that. It's gonna be a good one. Um, I've got big plans with pork ribs and tequila. So I'm gonna I'm gonna hopefully ring in 30 right. I think I think I might do another episode before before Christmas and everything just to to kind of wrap everything up because this one had a lot of knitting. Um, maybe show some other things. So have a great one. Stay safe. Stay warm. 
Um, and as always, enjoy your knitting. Bye, folks.